Hello. Uh, if you're watching this video, if you've clicked on this ch channel and you're, you're seeing this video, I, I'm probably going to set this as the channel trailer. The point of this video is to be a quick rundown of the path to victory for all of my anti-circumcision crusading. Um, I am a very pragmatic person, right? I, I have clear goals here. I want... I want a circumcision ban, I want the perpetrators punished, and I want massive government funding for a coherent program of tissue regeneration to regenerate our foreskins and make American men whole again, make mutilated men whole again. Um, and I have a clear, a clear path to victory in mind. Uh, I won't go over the history of circumcision here. I think... You know, that's a bit far afield from the, the purpose of this video. Uh, suffice it to say, you know, I mean, circumcision was started as a Victorian, a medicalized Victorian anti-sex campaign that never stopped. It was started in this country to deliberately harm male sexuality, to deliberately harm you. All the other reasons are a bunch of post hoc rationalizations. Uh... The intactivist movement to date has mostly focused on protesting hospitals, which I consider to kind of be hardened targets because these doctors have infinite authority appeal. They can gaslight you. They can go turn right back around and go mutilate more kids' genitals. They're a hardened target. Or reaching out to, to mommies, parents, and especially mommies at parenting fairs and in parenting groups online. This overall effort has yielded maybe a 0.8% yearly attrition rate in the, in the neonatal circumcision rate in America. Um, which uh, has sort of been steady. I think we can honestly do a lot better because... Being settled with that essentially means that you're settled with the idea of tens of millions more boys being genitally mutilated. It means you're never going to, there's never going to be a cataclysmic dialectic confrontation resulting in a circumcision ban, punishment for the perpetrators, government funding for tissue regeneration initiatives. It's just this slow attrition. I think we can do better. My protest strategy is built around the fact that our enemies and society at large will never empathize with boys and men. They will never empathize with our cause. They will never empathize with us. But they will fear us. Oh boy, will they fear us. It is said that the family is the backbone of society, the backbone, the cornerstone of civilization. My protest strategy targets this. It targets the parent-child interface. And make no mistake about it, the parents, the parent-child interface, the parents, and the, the, the what I call the parent-child interface, unlike the doctors, it, the parent-child interface is the soft underbelly of a circumcising society, especially what I call a low parental investment circumcising society. And by that, I mean non-religious. Uh, you know, the, I mean, American parents, they can, they, by low investment, I mean that they can't even explain why they did it themselves. They themselves don't know why they did it. Um, it's, it's low investment. It, it's, it's, a, it's the soft underbelly. And from a guerrilla warfare standpoint, you know, we are a guerrilla fighting force with minimal resources and a minimum of manpower. Uh, the, the the hospitals and doctors are a hardened target. The parent-child interface, however, is the soft underbelly, the, so the supply lines, the exposed supply lines of the infant circumcision industry. I mean, the parents essentially supply uh, the infant circumcision industry with literal raw meat. How do we do this? How do we target the parent-child interface? It's quite simple. You go and you show up at a school, elementary, middle, or high school. There's various utility to different the differing age groups, which we may talk a bit about later, but go to any which one. Go to all of them. 
a school, go to a church at the end of service or mass, uh, especially a young church where there are lots of parents and children. I mean, the point is not really to protest the religion, although you can protest, you know, the, the Catholic circumcision ban and the fact that it's not enforced. Uh, but pick a young one with, with lots of parents and children. Go to, you show up at, at a boys sports league game in a public park. Um, Little League is almost always independent and is almost always practiced and played in public parks. And many soccer leagues are as well, I believe. Little League offers a real opportunity. You show up at any of these places, and this is this is actually generalizable. I mean, you could uh, an amusement park gates, uh, public beaches, anywhere where parents and children are together, uh, potentially a uh, Boy Scout events. You can think of it yourself. I'll, I'll leave it open ended. You show up at one of these places with a sign, with maybe some cards to hand out, maybe, and a megaphone, and you start screaming, infant circumcision is child rape. Infant circumcision is child rape. Hey kids, go ask your parents what the word circumcision means. Did your parents cut off part of your penis as a baby? That brown ring around your penis, that's a scar where they cut off part of your penis as a baby. Go ask your parents about it, kids. And you do that. You only have to do that for maybe 30 seconds. I mean, you can stick around a little while longer to keep getting the point across, but get the, get, you know, get the message across. Um, maybe get in and get out, almost like a flash mob style thing. Uh, and you do, you do the damage. You do the deep damage. And I, I've actually debated the utility of maybe sticking around and approaching the parents with a more con and the people with a more conciliatory tone at the end of this and saying, this is terrible. You were hoodwinked. You were duped. Um, we have to work together. We have to ban this. We have to punish the people that duped you and did this to your son. And we have to get justice for your sons in the form of tissue regeneration to make your sons whole. I've debated the utility of sticking around for that. The boys sports league games in parks, I think, would actually be the greatest opportunity for that. Maybe at churches, schools, people would be leaving directly in cars to a large extent. Um, but uh, there may be some utility in that as well. Can you imagine what happens on the day that we show up and do this? We don't really have to imagine. We already have preliminary examples of this where parents have been have and children have walked by uh you know a public and activist protest and i can tell you it's not pretty uh when the message gets across uh one one of them one of the small children was asking about a sign it was a simple sign it said stop cutting baby penis very simple it's so simple they don't even have to know what the word circumcision means in order to understand how horrific that is one of the kids saw this sign. The children were screaming. The mothers were crying. The fathers were staring off into space in this sort of catatonic trance. It was bad. This is... Uh, somebody described it to me as, as culture jamming. I like that word. Somebody else just described it to me the other day as sort of being like a, a low-grade form of rioting in terms of the social damage that this is going to cause. In some ways, I prefer the term, or I like the term, culture terror. And we got to make it clear, we're not going away. We're going to be ramping this up, and this is essentially torture. And the torture will continue until such a time as society starts dealing with this. And, you know, you, if for nothing else, you know, not out of empathy, but society will deal with this if only 
uh, to escape the torture that we're going to subject them to. Uh, if we can tolerate being the villains in this regard, we will be remembered in history as the heroes. Now, there are, there are other uh, sort of associated strategies as well. In general, I just, there's something, right, I want to target the parent-child interface, but there's something even more basic, which is that the taboo against this topic is just not being broken often enough. I mean, you can go into medium in size and small town America, and they would not even know that this is a controversy. So there are, there are sort of lower grade versions of this sort of culture jamming strategy that I, I, I still kind of like, and it's, it's sort of a way of getting your feet wet. I, I still think we really have to ramp up these things targeting the parent-child interface at, at IRL events. But uh, there, there's other things too. You can be putting pretty shocking anti-circumcision flyers and propaganda in very interesting places. Uh, you can be going... I know people that are going into bookstores. And intactivists have historically put, uh, you know, anti-circumcision literature in, you know, new mommy books. Well, some people I know recently began putting them in a different location. They started putting them in the boys' novels, the young boys' novels, the, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, the Captain Underpants books, and the slightly older novels, too, like, uh, you know, well, you, you, you get what I'm, what I'm getting at here. They're doing that. They're stickering bathrooms, uh, flyering, even telephone poles. They're, they're going into parking lots and putting anti-circumcision pamphlets under the windshield wipers of every single car in the parking lot. Um, they're going into the greeting card sections of stores and they're putting anti-circumcision literature in the congratulations, it's a boy cards in the cards and in the envelopes so that they may not actually notice it until the parents open the card. They're putting anti-circumcision literature in uh, the boxes of toys, like boys' toys, like radio-controlled cars and uh, super soaker squirt guns. We have the ability to uh, cause a lot of chaos in this regard as well. I mean, sort of a sort of a, a, a way, a, a type of IRL shit posting, and it, it sort of again, it sort of does target the parent-child interface if if you're doing doing it on the on the children's end. Um, we have to be we have to be willing to. There's a bottleneck here, which is, okay, we're doing that. We're doing all the above things I've mentioned. We need to be able to translate this social chaos into explicit political power and into the success of a political agenda. And as I said before, that means circumcision bans, punishment for the perpetrators, uh, and massive government funding for tissue regeneration initiatives for the specific purpose of regenerating foreskins. This is a bottleneck in general for pretty much any social movement and we have to we have to make sure that this happens we we can't you know we can't let the social chaos stand we have to make it do work for us uh this brings me to a another part of the strategy that i have which is that i want to use in particular the high school and co and college campus i mean i want to be I want to be doing protests on college campuses as well, preferably organized by students on campus themselves. Um, I want to be using the high school and college campus portion of the activism and, and protests to be explicitly recruiting a raging mad activist class of young men who are capable of 
of, of furthering the movement. I mean, I want positive feedback. I want them going and further amping up, um, further amping up the protests at, at you know at schools. I mean, on universities, churches, sports league games, cranking up the cranking up the social chaos and the torture. And I mean, like I said, I I'm willing to make the gears of civilization grind to a halt. I want Little League games to be canceled. I want people not to be able to go to church because we're going to be out there screaming about circumcision and maybe maybe the papal bull banning circumcision. Hey, why did you violate the, the, the papal bull banning circumcision? Uh, quote, cannot possibly be observed without loss of eternal salvation. I want the schools to be shuttered. I mean, I don't know how bad this is going to get, but I... I Maybe the school boards would shutter the schools. The older kids, I'm not going to lie, one of the first things that I thought of when I was explosively and, and suddenly and shockingly red-pilled on circumcision at age 15 was, I want to stage a school strike. And I'm, I'm not trying to be anachronistic, I'm not applying an anachronism with the recent, uh, you know, MSD, the school shootings and the school walkouts. No, I was thinking about this uh, seven, eight year, years ago. Uh, one of the, it was one of the first things that came to mind, and I don't know, we might be able to get some of these high schoolers. I mean, if you're in college or you're you're out of college in the workforce, if you're going to do a strike or a student strike, people aren't really going to care. But if you're in the school system. I mean, shuttering the the educate the you know the the high school education system by by shutting down the schools in a school walkout is essentially provoking a legal and political crisis because the state is legally obligated to to ensure the education of children. So you're 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 effectively provoking a a political crisis, a specific political crisis. And if you refuse to let the schools reopen and continue the, the education process. So it's more, more chaos. Um, yes, we, we need to be recruiting an explicit activist class to get things done. And, and, and of young men, of angry young men willing to, to cause even more chaos. And from there, I mean, from there, who knows what things are going to look like. Uh, Uh, the next step, I would imagine, would be the explicit politicization of circumcision. I mean, this may be calling into congressmen's offices, demanding circumcision bans, showing up at town halls and screaming about circumcision bans, declaring yourself to be essentially a one-issue voter, screaming about circumcision bans. The explicit politicization of circumcision, I, I, I think this is actually beginning to happen even as we speak, perhaps in no small part to what I've been shouting about on the internet. Um, I don't think the mainstream political parties are going to have much interest in it, but their young fringes are. And I could see this happening from both sides. I mean, on the, the, on the right wing, on the right wing, the, the dissident right wing is, uh, is going to, you know, probably be able to paint this, you know, this is, this is foreign Middle Eastern genital mutilation being inflicted on this, this country. On the left, it could be something akin to, you know, this is, this is capitalism run amok. This is, this is organ trafficking. This is sexual repression. And I, I think it, it, it has to, and it is, it's, it's going to be explicitly politicized and this will be a natural step on the road to it being, being dealt with. And we will use this again, as I say, to force the political goals of the of the of the uh, the circumcision ban, the punishment for the perpetrators, and the government funding for tissue regeneration initi initiatives to make mutilated men whole again. And I'm wrapping up here. Uh, this last point is not optional. There must be justice for mutilated men. I, I do not want this to turn into the, the UK. They had the Anglo the entire Anglosphere had uh, infant circumcision. Uh, promoted as part of this Victorian anti-sex campaign. 
It reached a peak of about 35% in the UK in the late 40s before the NHS dropped funding for it. There was never any justice for them. There was no ban, no punishment for the perpetrators, no justice for the victims. And they're, I mean, they're now literally, you know, 70 years old and they're just being permitted to die and pass into history. I'm not going to let that happen. I, I actually, I actually think that this is actually quite trivial. The tissue regeneration is actually quite trivial. I don't, I don't think this is a technical problem. I think it's a problem of political will and funding. And by politicizing the issue, it, it puts it into our hands, you know, the, the hands of the public at large, the hands of non-experts. Um, you know, if you believe in, you know, physics, then you believe in chemistry, then you believe in biochemistry, and then you believe in, in biology, and it essentially becomes a deterministic problem. I mean, my goodness, they're already able to regenerate rabbit penises at the Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine, and 4Gen is working on regenerating human foreskins, uh, you know, the six, with successful implement, Im implantation of these re uh, regenerated penises and reproduction coming from it. Uh, this is just this is a matter of political will and we and and funding and we can work towards that uh again in general and i'm closing it out here turn that frown upside down i know a lot of intactivists are very black pilled on the entire issue and I can kind of see why. I don't think many intactivists think about this in the way that I do, sort of from a political organizing approach. But uh, with this strategy targeting the parent-child interface, we have a nuclear weapon. Uh, the power is in our hands. The ball is in our court. This country will comply. Or we will crank up the torture until it complies. So, turn that frown upside down. You can have a, a smile of mischievous glee on your face uh, here forward. As I said, in regards to these divisive protest strategies, if we can tolerate being the villain for but a little while longer, we can be the heroes. We will be remembered as the heroes in eternity. This protest strategy essentially puts the time, the time until you have your foreskin regenerated, the time until you are made whole, the time until you are able to move on with this issue and move on with your life is directly related to your willingness to get involved and do these radical things now. And that is both a bit scary, but it is very empowering. If you want to talk, uh, I mean, this is a very disturbing issue. You know, I'm I'm dealing with a lot of new new viewers and new, an influx from uh, from all over the internet. I mean, on the podcast circuit and whatnot. Feel free to contact me. You can contact me in. Uh, the comments of the YouTube videos, uh, in, in you, the YouTube message, uh, platform, which is completely broken. You have to go to my channel page and then there's a, a little letter icon on, on the main channel page. That's the message system. It's terribly broken. I have, nobody gets notifications, but you can do that. I'll probably divert, you know, make contact and move us to email if you're going to do that. You can contact me on Twitter under the same name, Gregory Malchuk. Uh, I float around on Discord, so if you want to talk about anything, you know, how you're dealing with this emotionally, or protest strategy, or anything, feel free to contact me. Tell me in the content, in the comments, what you think. Um, this, this video is long, but I, I needed a video to sum up the path to victory, because this is the whole thing. I, I want our people to have very clear goals to work toward. And uh, I think I think this video really, really sums it up. So tell me what you think. Take care. Bye-bye.